In this section is about TFS setup and configuration. So in this section, we're going to cover three topics, which means there'll be three separate sets of slides and videos to follow along with. The first one we're going to talk about is TFS projects. Then we're going to look at TFS process templates. And then lastly, we're going to look at the TFS project collections. So join us as we talk about those topics. Hi, and welcome back to our course, Introduction to Team Foundation Server. In this video, we're going to discuss the introduction to team projects in TFS. In this video, we're going to discuss the logical definition of a team project, the physical definition of a team project. We're going to talk about the permissions you're going to need to create, manage, and use a team project, as well as demonstration of the permissions and how you go about setting them and things like that. Think of a team project as a collection, a container that holds a collection of artifacts that you use on your project. So this container, the team project, uh, defines the, the source control you're going to use, whether it's Git or TFEC. It defines the work items you're going to use, whether it's Scrum, Agile, or CMMI. It's going to define the documents that you're going to work with and the reports that are available. So all of these are dictated, again, by the team project, and they, they're drawn up with that XML file that we showed you earlier in videos uh, to make the project's process template. So when we create our project, it kicks off the process template, and it actually creates that project with all the artifacts that we defined in it. The physical definition is basically a, it's a group of tools. As you can see from this image, you have your version control, you have your branches, your builds, your work items, the settings, all of that encompassed there in that Team Explorer view makes up that team project, okay? And this one happens to be using a Git, you can tell because it's got pull requests available, but um, in TFEC you'd see something called the Source Control Explorer, and uh, that would work for TFEC. And you can see some other options there, like the web portal and stuff. We'll look at all this as we go through the demonstration. So with that, let's talk about permissions. So in order to work with a team project and to create a team project, you must be what we call a project collection administrator. That's got some pretty high privileges. You're allowed to do quite a bit with a project collection. If you're an administrator to a collection, you can access all the projects in that collection, not just the one you're working with. You can create them, you can delete them, you can do all you want with those projects, unless you modify the permissions on those project collection users or the collection administrators. In order to manage the project, you must be a project administrator. So now we're down to the project level. Project administrators manage just their project. Okay, and they're one step below the collection administrators. Next, we have the ability to work with the artifacts inside the project. Create bills, work with work items, view reports, things like that. Checking code. Um, that you need to have contributor permissions for. So that's pretty much the default that people get when you set up team project and you start adding users to it is uh, you get the contributor permissions um, by default. And lastly, we have a stakeholder. And a stakeholder permissions allows a user who doesn't necessarily need to modify anything in the project. They don't need to modify the check-in or check-out code. They don't need to modify the bills or the reports or, you know, sometimes they don't even need to modify the work items, but it's available to them as a stakeholder. So it's somebody that says read-only access to a project for the most part. So your stakeholders on the project may have that license or that permissions set. And they'll be able to go in through the web interface and see their project artifacts without being having the, the necessary rights to go and change things on you. So with that, let's go look at a demonstration of the Team Explorer. And we'll look at how you set the permissions on a team project, as well as we're going to create a brand new team project. So join us for that demonstration. As you can see, we're in Visual Studio here. We have our Team Explorer tab open, and that's a tab that's built into Visual Studio that allows us to connect to TFS and allows us to see all the artifacts in our team project. The first thing I want to do here is I want to actually create a team project. How I do that is I go into the home up here, and I go down to Projects and to my Teams, 
move over to new team project and this will take me out to the web interface to create a new team project. We're going to call this demo TP team project. You can give it a description. This is where you set the version control system you want to use. Again, we can use Git or TFVC. I'm going to choose Git as my repository. And work item process is either Agile, Scrum, or CMMI. You can see I have some others here that have been modified off the Scrum. Later on in this course, we're going to talk about modifying process templates, and you'll see how we'll do that and set those up. So for now, I'm just going to select the Scrum template. I'm going to create the project, and it creates pretty quickly here. Within, within a minute, you pretty much have a team project built out for you and ready to be worked with. As you can see, it's, it's done. We have our team project now. And you can see over here we could add members to it or add code to it or set up a build or add work, the work items. So you can do a lot right here from the web interface. For ours, we're going to go back to Visual Studio and we're going to go to the Manage Connections plug up here next to the home. We're going to click on Manage Connections, come down here to the drop down and select Connect to Team Projects. What I'm going to do is connect to my team project. And you'll see here we have our demo TP project in that list. And we'll set that up. Those are going to be all the artifacts associated with our demo TP collect project in our collection, our default collection. Okay, so the first thing that's asking us to do is clone a repository for working with source control in Git. We could very easily do that and set up for Git, which again, we'll look at later on in this course, a deep dive into the Git and how to set that all up. And you can see here we have the changes, the pull requests for Git, uh, work items, those work items we're going to work with, builds, branches that we're working with. So again, this is how you set all your things up in TFS, all your artifacts, all the branches, your builds, all that will happen. Uh, you can initiate that from within the Team Explorer. Most of those will take you out to a web page where you'll actually do the configuration, but you can launch that from within the Team Explorer window. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go to the home and make sure we go to settings. On settings, we have the team project and a team project collection node. Team project has a lot of artifacts associated with the project, and the collection has some membership and permissions associated with the collection. So let's click on the security of a team project collection and talk about that for a second. Project collection administrators. This is the group that has permissions to create team projects along with everything else. You can see here the allows are pretty extensive. You can edit the process. You can delete a process. You can create new projects. One thing you can't do is because these are created as part of the collection on VSTS or TFS, they don't have the ability to modify the administrator's group's permissions. So those are pretty much set and that's what you're going to have. So you want to be careful about who gets put into the collection administrator's group. Okay. And if we go to the members, we can see here I'm currently a member of that group because I created the team project. And the team project uh, creator automatically falls in the collection administrator's group. Again, we have a build administrators for the collection. We have the service accounts, which we don't usually put people in. Those are for service accounts for running builds. And the proxy service account, again, if we're running with a proxy server. And then we have down here the valid users group. And valid users shows all the users within our team project, our team project collection, actually. So these, they tells you, again, what project they're associated with and the valid users in that particular team project. You can see here, if I click on it, uh, I'm, an, I'm a member of that team project valid users group within that Beyond Build project. So with that, let's go back to Visual Studio and go to the security of a team project. And you can see here it's a little different. First thing you'll notice is we have this team. There's a team created automatically when you create a D, uh, team project. That's the default project name is the same as your collection. So, and you can see here my team name is Demo TP Team. 
because I named my project demo TP. It just throws team on the end of it. Now I have my team set up. You'll see I have members of my team. That's myself. Again, the creator of the project automatically becomes a team member. And you'll notice here we have the build administrators for this project. Again, these are project level permissions as opposed to the earlier collection level permissions. Uh, the contributors, again, that's what most users are going to fall into is the contributors group. So when you're adding new developers that are going to work with source control and things, they will be added to the contributors group. And then the project administrators, uh, valid users again, and the readers. Readers turn into the people like the stakeholders where they just have read access. So you can see that it's pretty straightforward for creating a team project. It's pretty easy to work with it. What we're going to do later on in the course is dive into a lot of these areas very deeply and, and take a look at them. So with that, let's go back to the slides and wrap up. All right, so we've seen our demonstration. Let's wrap up this section of the video. We discussed the logical definition of a team project. We discussed the physical definition of the team project. We demonstrated the team project and we looked at the permissions needed to work with team projects and create them. You can see there's quite a bit that we learned about the team project there.